The Rangers lose to the Boston Bruins 5-2 to two at MSG. The Rangers really fell apart in the third period in this one. Not a great game from the Rangers. A good second period. And look, the Bruins, they're 10-1. and one. They're a very good team. But this was definitely up there for one of the worst Ranger games of the season overall. What really hurt, Ryan Lindgren uh, injured in the first period. He was hit by uh, David Pasternak. They called interference. And I don't believe he came back after that. Um, they say it's an upper body injury. I'm suspecting concussion, but I'm not 100% on this one. But... I think that Lindgren will be out for some amount of time and forever, however long that is, that puts the Rangers in a really, really tough spot because the depth is not great to begin with. So, you know, now you throw Libor Hayek in there and now Zach Jones, let's just say, has an elevated role or something that looks like that. That's rough. That's really, really tough. Uh, I mean, the state of the defense is not great. There's other issues as well, but I mean, Jacob Truba has been horrendous. Just absolutely awful he was a minus three tonight uh to me he, he looks more like he did in let's say 2020 2021 you know where last year almost feels like a slight aberration um but yeah i i feel like true i mean just offensively there's nothing there turns the puck over a lot not the fastest skater look if he went down you'd feel that don't get me wrong like You'd, you'd rather him in there than not, but I don't know. To me, like, this is not someone that should be, be being paid what he is paid, and now he's your captain. So, yeah, he's one person that comes to mind that is definitely on my shit list. There's a lot, you know, as far as the forward group. Um, I, I go back to Chris Kreiner as someone who just, there's not enough there. He doesn't look great, but, I mean, there's there's obviously people that are much worse than him. I mean, I always talk about Ryan Reeves, like, he gives you nothing. He provides nothing. I mean, sure, I guess some intimidation? Not really. Not really. So, Reeves is someone, like, who shouldn't be in there. Um, you know, Ryan Carpenter, similar. Like, Ryan Carpenter is, is not a whole lot better than Reeves, and it makes for a pretty slow fourth line. Sammy Blay, like, isn't, you know, after the ACL injury, like, he's not back to what we had saw uh, early last season. Like, not even close. He's just, he's not. And look, it's tough when you're playing with, with those guys. It's tough, but not a whole lot there. Um, you know, Julian Gauthier, like, is someone who, you know, he'll have a couple of good games, but we know what he is. Like, we know what he is. Like, he's not a very reliable player. He's got some speed. He's got some skill, but... You know, he, he's not someone that is really a, a surefire, like, NHL regular. Definitely not. I, I feel like Lafreniere it doesn't really fit well uh, with Panarin and Trocek. I, I would personally try to mix some things around if it were me. Uh, you know, I would continue to have Kako, you know, play with Zabana Jad. I think I, I'd keep that going, or at least in the top six. But Lafreniere, they're really missing Philip Hedl. Like, that's a big-time player to not be in there. He is very important, I feel like, for that, you know, for that third line. Then it gives you a lot more options. Maybe you put Lafreniere on the left wing with Heedle, and that can make a, a decent line, depending on who you have on the right side. But, you know, then it's two-thirds of the line that are somewhat competent. Um, but, yeah, right now you're really depending a lot on that top six, and some of those guys aren't performing. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of depth, and so if the top guys aren't getting it done, it makes it tough. And then also Igor Shesterkin, who really... While he's made some really good saves, he's letting a lot of stinkers. He really has. Like, it's been, you know, very inconsistent for Igor. Uh, I think that'll turn it around, but it hasn't been great. Let's let's be honest. For Shesterkin on the in the early going, it's it hasn't been been the best. Uh, so the Rangers, you know, I, I think when all is said and done, I think that this is definitely a playoff team. I do, but. They can't afford too many injuries. Because like I said, the depth is, is really thin. I, I hope that Ryan Lindgren's all right. That's all I have to say. And I expect him to miss some time. It's just hopefully it's not that long. Right? Hopefully we're talking more like a week and not a month. You know, that's kind of what it is. So, yeah. I mean, I'm very afraid of the thought. And we saw what happened against the Penguins with Lindgren. 
it, it, when Lindgren was out against Pittsburgh in the playoffs, the Rangers were in deep trouble. He he returned, and everything got better. It's it's important. So that more than anything, more than I mean, and Lindgren played into the struggles. But I, if, even if the Rangers had won, I think the Lindgren injury, you just, you hope it's okay. You, you hope that it's nothing terrible. And I, I'd like to think that's the case, but it just goes to show you how important he is and, you know, certain guys are. But first period wasn't a great one for the Rangers. Uh, and look, the Bruins, Olmark is now 8-0 eight, eight on the season. Uh, and the Bruins are dealing with some injuries as well. They're not the, the healthiest team either. So... And they got it done. The Bruins have been off to, to a tremendous start this year. Uh, like I said, Pasternak takes that penalty at 507, but the Rangers power play doesn't get it done. Uh, and when the Rangers, I mean, the Rangers power play hasn't been as effective this year. Like the zone time's still good, but it just hasn't been as uh, the results just aren't there. So they don't score there. And then later on, Pasternak scores on a bad angle goal. This was initially a Zach Jones block shot, I guess. I mean, Jones, Zach Jones was not good tonight. Zach Jones wasn't like this is more of a sixth, seventh defenseman at best currently. And now, like, he was playing too many minutes, but you had no choice. So, Zach Jones, you know, responsible for the change of possession. And then Pasternak kind of bumps off Jimmy VZ. And it's a bad angle shot that should have never went in. It's a backhanded shot from like almost the corner. And it goes in. Pasternak's eighth goal of the season from uh, Taylor Hall gives the Bruins one of the lead. And they would carry that one of the lead into the second period. Adam Fox trips Jake DeBrus for the Rangers. Penalty kill does a good job. They kill off the penalty. And then the Rangers tie it up. And it's Jimmy Vesey uh, who scores the goal, his first goal of the season. So Jimmy Vesey's first goal as a Ranger since 2019 on a nice pass by Zabanajad and Kako as well. So Vesey from Zabanajad and Kako at 10 21 ties it up. Then. You could say that there was a turning point after this, kind of. Um, now, at this point, Lindgren's already out of the game. Brayden Schneider with a very clean hit on Trent Frederick. A very clean hit by Schneider. It sucks that he has to then defend himself. A.J. Greer goes in there, and it's a, and he fights Brayden Schneider, and it's an instigator penalty on Greer. And as well, there's a fight between Frederick and Goodrow. So a lot going on, two fights at the same time. And it just sucks that that's... It was a clean, picture-perfect hit by Schneider. And the Bruins kill it off. See, that's the thing. It's like, if, from a Brosnan perspective, they'll take that penalty all day long. Like, you know, in their mind, what Schneider did deserved retribution, if you will. Even though, again, it sucks that... And the Rangers got the power play out of it, right? So I can't complain all that much. But the Bruins kill it off. But the Rangers played a good second period, I thought. Like, the second was a lot better. We head into the third. And last year, the third period was good. was very kind to the Rangers. This year, not as much. And the third period was really bad. Um, and so it starts off with Charlie Coyle uh, scoring his fifth of the season from Lindholm and Felino at 2.56 in the third. And this is a play where he he easily, uh, Lindholm easily goes around the net. Reeves is like trying to, I don't even know what Reeves is trying to do. He, he felt, you know, he he's too slow. And then, and then Coyle wins the battle in front with Truba. You, you got to be stronger, Jacob. I mean, really, the criticism is only going to grow for Jacob Truba. But sir, I mean... He's now the captain, and I I have a feeling I know where this is headed, uh, and it's not going to be good for him. It really isn't going to be. So, you know, it's early. The Rangers are winning enough, but if Shruba continues to struggle, it's going to be – eyes are going to be on him. Now, the Rangers do tie it up. Adam Fox, who continues – you know, I think Adam Fox's start of the season has been pretty strong. Um scores a goal, his third of the season from Kreider and Kako. So make that two assists for Kako. And so a quick response from the Rangers. They score less than a minute uh, after the Coyle goal. However, the Bruins score right away after, and that's Trent Frederick. He scores. Uh, it's his second goal of the season from Felino and Clifton, and the Bruins would keep that lead. They make it 3-2. That, that was tough. Fox ties it up, and you give it back up again. Um, not, and that goal maybe wasn't great by Igor either. That, 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 uh, Frederick goal, uh, it might've been screened though, to be fair. And then the dagger is Jake DeBrus scores his fourth goal of the season from Zaka and Hall at 10, 19. And this was a play where, um, Zach Jones, Zach Jones w w was responsible in this one as well, where he turns it over. I think Truba might have been involved in this also. It all kind of blurs together after a while. It was a cross-size pass to Nebraska, and he buries it by Shesterkin. Odd man rush. 
I think Mika, actually Mika was on for this one. I think Mika tried to get back and cover up, but it just didn't work. And so it's 4-2. Uh, there would be a couple of power plays that would come to the way of the Bruins. Zach Jones h holds Coyle. Rangers kill. Zibanejad trips Hall at 16-22. Rangers kill. Rangers don't get anything going for the most part. And Lindholm gets the empty net goal. His fourth goal of the season. It's unassisted. And the Bruins win it 5-2. Disappointing game for the Rangers. Definitely. Uh, they were outshot 37-20. to 20. Uh, and so now we'll head into the next game against the Detroit Red Wings. I would uh, I would gather that Halak will be in net for that one. That would be my guess. Feel pretty. I mean, it's not definite because there's a couple of days off. They might want to get Igor right back in there, but I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Halak against Detroit. And then it'll be a game against the Islanders. Uh, and Detroit and the Islanders are, are, play each other um, the day before the Detroit uh, Rangers game. So hopefully you get a, a tired Detroit team coming off a of back-to-back, um, and we'll see what happens. And same with the Islanders. Islanders will also have a game. So the Rangers got to take advantage of that situation where you might be facing tired teams. And so let's see how the rest of this homestand goes. Hope for good health for Ryan Lindgren. I'm optimistic that Hedo will be back by Detroit. It seems like he's close, but you know you never know with these things. Because I, I suspect it's a concussion. Sometimes there's setbacks, so you just you don't exactly know where he's at but it seems like he's close but rangers uh it, it's look that ended a three-game winning streak they had been playing better they're six four and two which isn't disastrous but you don't love what you see you'd rather it be in november than later in the season but the rangers got to pick this thing up and again uh bruins come in there and really uh we're the better team uh, without a doubt. So the Rangers lose it 5-2 to two against the Boston Bruins. We will see how they fare in their next game. Uh, and that'll be another original six battle at MSG. And it'll be against the Detroit Red Wings.